Grace, peace, and mercy be yours in abundance as you continue to follow your Savior to the cross. This evening we're going to focus on a gospel lesson from Luke chapter 23. We'll come to those words uh, as uh, we go through our devotion this evening. Uh, let us begin with a prayer. O oh Lord, bless our time together as we gather around your word, and in your name we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ to enjoy each other's fellowship. May your word continue to comfort us and encourage us and equip us to serve you with our lives and to, ser to serve others with your love. In your name we pray this, amen. Mom, I'm bored. I don't have anything to do. Complained the 10-year-old boy as he laid on his floor, staring up into the ceiling in a room full of toys. There is just nothing on TV tonight, murmured the couple as they skimmed through 185 channels on direct TV. It's one of those ironies of our time. We live perhaps in the wealthiest country that ever existed in the history of mankind. We are a people full of money and freedom and yet we struggle to find ways to entertain ourselves or at least entertain ourselves in a healthy way. Focusing on the ironies of our Savior's passion uh, tonight, we're going to look at a man, we're going to meet a man named Herod Antipas. He was governor of, I guess you would say, the northern part of the region of Israel. And being a governor, he basically had everything at, uh, his, in his hands. He could do just about anything that he wanted to. Yet we find him in this lesson uh, with his unfulfilled desire for entertainment. He wanted to see Jesus. That was his entertainment. So his story begins in Luke chapter 23, start reading at verse 6. Luke says, On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerus Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. Well, nothing strange there, right? There were tons of stories out there about Jesus doing some pretty incredible things. There were tons of stories out there of how Jesus had transformed the lives of even the worst dregs of society, including prostitutes and tax collectors. There were stories that Herod had heard of people just clinging to every word Jesus had to say when he preached a sermon. And even going back to his childhood, there were stories about how the great teachers in the temple were just amazed at how much Jesus knew of God's word. So with all things at his hands, doing anything he could do, Herod wanted to see Jesus. Herod was the son of Herod the Great, the man who was ruling when Jesus was born and tried to have Jesus killed. Well, when Antipas's father died, that region had been divided up into two, the north and the south. Antipas got the north up in Galilee. His brother Archelaus got the south, southern part uh, down by Jerusalem uh, and further south. Well, political and uh, uh, family drama sort of developed as Antipas found a way successfully to oust his brother from the throne and it was replaced by, or he was replaced by Pontius Pilate. And to stir up even more bad blood, Antipas ended up marrying his own niece, who at the time actually was married to one of his younger brothers, Philip. So sort of a, a strange situation, but just kind of gives you a little bit of the character of these Herods. Well, when John the Baptist went to Antipas and told him that he was committing adultery, uh, we learn that Antipas had John the Baptist thrown in jail, and even later on uh, had John the Baptist killed at that vengeful request of his stepdaughter and his new wife. Well, when Herod learned that, uh, learned about Jesus, he sort of figured, well, maybe this is John the Baptist come back to life, and all the more reason why he wanted to see Jesus. 
If he can do all these miracles, including raising himself from the dead, boy, he's got to see this. But that's sort of where one of the ironies kind of comes into play. As much as Herod wanted to see Jesus, it wasn't because he was filled with regret and remorse and guilt and shame with all these horrible things that he had done. You see, the the irony is that the one person who could have changed Herod's life made a huge impact, made a huge difference in his life. The one who could have changed this bloodthirsty, uh, power-hungry ruler was the one who actually came to Herod to help him. But all Herod wanted was some magic tricks. Amazingly, the best thing that could have ever happened to Herod was standing there right in front of him, just like he wanted. Never before in the history of the world had God appeared in human body. In flesh and blood, there was Jesus, the Son of God, a person that Antipas could have talked to, could have listened to, could have learned much from. But instead, Herod wanted to be entertained with all that anticipation, and God finally delivering on his request, he missed it. And and of all the people who needed to hear Jesus and, and grow from Jesus, it was Herod. But again, all he wanted to be was entertained. Right here in front of you and me is Jesus. Right here in front of us, each and every day, is an opportunity to meet Jesus and to learn of Jesus and to talk with Jesus. Do we always recognize that? Do we always pay attention? Do we take advantage of that? On a Sunday morning, we come and we see Jesus at his holy supper at the table. We see his body and blood that we get to partake of. Do we see Jesus and and are we content and satisfied with who he is and what he wants to give to us? Have you ever been disappointed when you open scriptures or when you left on a Sunday morning? You wish Jesus wouldn't have made such a big deal about your sins? Do you wish sometimes that when you open scriptures, Jesus would tell you, Well, life is going to get easier. After all, you've been through a lot in this sinful world. Do you ever find yourself, kind of like Herod, wanting to be entertained more than Jesus doing what he needs to do to uh, confront us in our sin so that he can heal us? It's a slippery slope, which we see going on in our American culture of Christianity Right, the, the, the church becoming entertainment or, or the, the church uh, doing things so that it does a really good job at customer service. Right? And, and if we don't get what we want out of church, our culture tells us maybe we should go look somewhere else. Kind of like spoiled little kids sometimes, right? We just want to sit here and be wowed and awed and, and almost spoon-fed. Aren't those the signs that we are turning into Herods? People who only want a Jesus who is going to tell us what we want to hear or make us feel good about ourselves or a a Jesus uh, who's going to give us all this stuff, all the things that we want. You see, that's one of the ironies of Jesus standing there next to Herod. Him standing there next to Herod was actually part of the plan to save Herod from his own sins. But the spoiled little prince thought that he was the one in charge. He thought he was in control of the Son of God. At least that's what he thought. Luke goes on to tell us, Herod plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus wasn't going to play ball with Herod. Jesus wasn't going to stroke his ego. Uh, He wasn't going to mislead Herod as to why he had come to this earth and what it was that Herod really needed from him. Jesus was going to make it very clear who was in charge. 
As all this is going on, then, we're told the chief priests and teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. When we really think about that, that's one of the things that's kind of inspiring about this story, is that Jesus didn't have to hold his tongue. He had every right to lash back at these false accusations. Jesus didn't have to sit there or stand there and let this, this puppet Roman, this Roman puppet and his puny soldiers abuse him and insult him. But he did. Well in control, he chose to passively continue down that road that led to the cross. And that made Herod just totally irate. He loses patience with Jesus. He gets tired of Jesus. And we're told he and the soldiers ridiculed him and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. And then they send him back to Herod. After all that waiting, perhaps years, wanting to see Jesus, and yet he sends him away without ever really understanding who Jesus really is. After all that waiting to be entertained, he has to go home that night. Herod goes home that night uh, without uh, getting what he wanted. And sadly, he went home without getting what he needed. What Jesus wanted to give to him, but Pilate, what Pilate wasn't willing. The end of our story this evening tells us that I suppose we might say there are some positive things that came out of this meeting in the, in the wee hours of the morning. We're told at the end, verse 12, that day Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. It's just a sad point to see that the best thing that happened to Pilate and Herod on that day that Jesus died for their sins is that they became friends. Not much to write home to mom about. Not much to help them in their eternal perspective of life with or without God. One of the ironies of uh, our uh, entertainment culture in which we live is that all too often we, we make mindless entertainment more important than the things that we care about and the things that really matter in our lives, right? Sometimes mindless entertainment becomes too much of a priority. Well, the story is told of uh, one of the missionaries from our synod uh, who had told someone about his first year of marriage. He and his wife uh, were missionaries and uh, they, they really didn't have much to do because the local TV was in Spanish. They were down in South America and so their Spanish wasn't good enough to really get anything out of the show. So they ended up uh, actually having quality time with each other, playing games and talking to each other, mostly because they just got married. But more importantly, as the, the missionary cited, uh, he, he realized that later on in their marriage, when TV started to assume more of their time, they started to lose something that was sort of important to them. That, that entertainment had become too important to them. And as he reflected back on those years when they actually talked to each other and enjoyed each other's company, and then the years of TV and entertainment, uh, he, ex he explained how sad it was that we can allow entertainment things like TV sort of overshadow the very spouse uh, that we cherished on a wedding day. This morning I watched a video, uh, a pastor who was talking about some statistics about quality time with loved ones. And uh, this study showed that on average, the, the working person spends 150 seconds each day in some type of close conversation with that significant other. It's only two and a half minutes. And then if you put that over a week, 17 and a half minutes that are spent over a week with this quality time to talk. And, and with kids, it's even worse. 30 seconds a day, the study showed, which again, not even five minutes a week. Certainly a, a statistic uh, that we would want to blow up and, and make it much better. 
But the point is how easily we can be distracted in our lives from what is most important, what is valuable to us. And even more foolish is when we allow the world and entertainment to distract us from Jesus and who he is and and what he has to offer to us and, and how he is the one who can make a difference in our lives, who gives us that hope of eternal life. We learned from Herod uh, this evening that we would ask God to give us clear vision and wisdom to see ourselves as the very people who needed Jesus to do exactly what he did, suffer and die and give us that gift of eternal life. But we also learn from Herod's example that we pray that God would continue to instill in us a, a desire and excitement to meet Jesus and to visit with him, to never get bored or tired, to never lose focus of what it is Jesus has to offer to us through his word, the words of forgiveness and hope and joy. And we would learn from Herod, we would pray that Jesus would continue to open our eyes and, and enjoy these visits with him so that we can see how great his love for us as it's displayed in his passion and is demonstrated on the cross. May God continue to give us eyes that focus on Christ, who, who dig into our meetings with him, and we enjoy all the wonderful things that he has in store for us as we marvel at the depth of his love and, and we celebrate the wonderful gift he's given to us in heaven. God, grant us that in Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses human understanding will keep and guard your hearts through faith in Christ. Amen.